affair must be part and parcel of our lives. Maombi lazima iwe sehemu ya maisha yetu. Even in our ministries. Hata katika huduma zetu. You may wonder why you are struggling in your ministry. Unaweza shangani kwa nini unangangana katika huduma yako. Maybe you are an usher. Uenda wewe ni shemanzi. Maybe you are a worshipper. Uenda wewe ni mwabudu. Maybe you are a pastor. Uenda wewe ni mchungaji. Maybe you are a sheep of Christ. Uenda wewe ni kondoo la Kristo. You may wonder why you are struggling in your salvation. Unaweza kuwa ukishangani kwa nini unanangana katika ma mtembo wako wa Kikristo It is because ni kwa sababu you have not invested in prayer Haujawekeza kwa maombi You have not put your foundation on prayer Haujaweka msingi wako katika maombi Your maombi. ministry is not under the foundation of prayer Huduma yako haijawekezwa kwenye maombi We join up with all the hosts of angels surrounding this place crying holy holy Wacha tuombe Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Baba katika jina kusana la Yesu. I thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Nina kushukuru kwa ajili ya fursa hii ya kupendeza. That you have given us at such a time. Ya kwamba umetupatia kwa nafasi kama huu. That we may live to see this very very mighty visitation. Ili tupate kuishi na kuona matembeleo makuu sana. Thank you so much my Lord. Asante sana bwana wangu. Many generations. Vizazi vingi. They long to see what we have witnessed. Walitamani kuona kile ambacho tumeshuhudia. But they never had that chance lakini hawakupata fursa you never gave them the opportunity haukupatia fursa to see what we have seen wapate kuona kile ambacho tumeona even the prophets of the old hata wale nabii wa kitambo they long to see what we have seen walitamani kuona kile ambacho tumeona yet they, you never gave them an opportunity lakini haukuwapatia fursa but who are we o lord lakini sisi ni nani e bwana that you graft us such an opportunity ya kwamba umetupatia tunuku kama hii to see cripples walking tu upate kuona viwete to see the blind seeing to see the deaf hearing to see cancer being deleted to see hiv being deleted we are not worthy my father this wonderful day we repent we repent before you lord for having misunderstood your grace today we repent and ask you my father naomba na tunakuomba baba yangu even as we are going to listen from your word tunapenda kusikiza neno lako we invite you in this word tunakukaribisha katika hili neno that you may speak to each one of us ya kwamba upate kunena na sisi sote it's my prayer that you arrest the hearts of people ni ombi langu la kwamba upate kuteka nyara mioyo za watu that everybody may be tuned to what this word ya kwamba kila mmoja apate kumakinika kwa ajili ya hili neno that this word may transform their lives ya kwamba hili neno lipate kubadilisha maisha yao that, is, that, that this word may change their lives ya kwamba hili neno lipate kubadilisha maisha yao that they may never remain the same again ya kwamba wasalie sawa tena we say thank you my father Today I surrender before you. Leo najisalimisha mbele zako. As a, as a vessel of service. Kama chombo tu cha kutumika. I am not worthy my Lord. Sistahili bwana wangu. It's just by your grace and mercy. Kwa neema tu na rehema. You have allowed me today. Ya kwa mumeni ruhusu leo. To be the vessel of service. Nipate kuwa chombo cha kutumika. To, tram, to transmit your word. Ili nipate kuleta neno lako. To your precious people. Kwa watoto wako wa dhamana. Thank you so much my father. Asante sana baba yangu. May you use me unitumie to minister your word ili nipate kushiriki neno lako minister also to me nishirikie nishirikishe pia mimi that i may not remain the same ili nipate kutobaki sawa tena thank you so much my asante lord asante sana bwana wangu the mighty name of jesus katika jina kuu sana la yesu we have prayed believing and trusting tumeomba na kuamini amen amina praise the lord bless jina the people jina la bwana hallelujah hallelujah we really bless the lord so much tunabariki bwana sana and i really bless the lord personally na nabariki bwana sana mbinyasi for this opportunity kwa ajili ya fursa hii that he has given me ambaye amenipatia there were so many better people kulikuwa na watu wazuri zaidi could have done ambao wangefanya even better than me hata vyema kuniliko because of his mercy lakini kwa ajili ya rehema zake today he has privileged me leo amenitunuku to give you the word nipate kuwapatia neno to minister to you nipate kuwapatia neno just want neno. to ask you ningeomba tu to prepare your heart for it wanae moyo wako vizuri because the lord is going to minister to us sababu bwana anaenda kutu in a very very serious way kwa njia ya kumaanisha sana so prepare your notebooks kwa hivyo anda vitabu vyako Prepare your pen because the lord is going to teach us kwa sababu anaenda serious matters kwa ajili ya mambo ya kumaanisha you know very well unajua vizuri we are sitting at the verge of eternity tunakaa katika ukingo ya umilele we are sitting at a time tunakaa wakati 
when the latter revival wakati ambapo uvumbi wakati wa mwisho that was promised in the bible ambayo iliahidiwa katika biblia is in the church iko katika kanisa and right now moving in a very mighty way na sasa hivi naenda katika njia kuu sana preparing souls ikiandaa nafsi for the glorious coming of the messiah kwa ajili ya kuja kwake utukufu mesia hallelujah hallelujah praise jesus jina la bwana lipewe sifa is that not favor from the Lord. Je, hiyo sio kibali kutoka kwa Bwana? Lord has really loved us very Bwana much. Bwana ametupenda sana. As a generation. Kama kizazi. Yesterday jana was a very very beautiful day. Ilikuwa ni siku ya kupendeza sana. We managed to follow. Tuliwezeshwa ku The powerful kushi. thanksgiving. Ile ibada kuu sana. That the whole nation was observing. Ambayo mataifa yote yalikuwa yanatazama. Moja kwa moja kutoka Nairobi. And indeed na kwa hakika we can all attest that the bomet healing service ya kwamba mkutano wa bomet was very very much different ilikuwa tofauti sana we saw tremendous signs and wonders tuliona ishara kuu sana na maajabu that speaks of the this age that we are sitting in now aba inaongelea huu wakati ambao tuko sasa damu ya yesu has power ina nguvu so today kwa hivyo leo i don't know if you were able to follow yesterday's message sijui kama uliwezeshwa kufuatilia ujumbe ya jana the lord was speaking to us in a very very serious manner bwana alikuwa anatunenea kwa njia kumaanisha sana concerning these times kulingana na wakati huu concerning our prepared kulingana na maandizi maandalizi yetu i remember the lord speaking na nakumbuka bwana kinena that ya kwamba our salvation wokovu wetu was actually rooted ilikuwa was actually rooted iliwekezwa on the salvation of israel kwa wokovu wa israeli that we were not we were not supposed to get this salvation that we are enjoying right now ya kwamba hatukupaswa kukuwa na hiyo wokovu ambao tuko nayo sasa it's only by the grace of god kwa neema tu ya bwana by the mercies of god neema ya bwana we were grafted in ya kwamba tukawekezwa that we may also be partakers ya kwamba sisi pia tupate kushiriki the salvation we are enjoying right now wokovu ambao tuna it was never arrived wokovu ambao tuko nayo sasa haikuwa ni letu it was never arrived haikuwa ni haki yetu in the lord's plan of salvation katika mpangilio ya bwana ya wokovu yes in the lord's plan of salvation katika mpangilio ya bwana ya wokovu the lord never ever blessed us when we bwana katukamwe hakutuweka popote as the gentle church sisi kama kanisa the ya mataifa sisi bwana kanisa ya mataifa kanisa they never mataifa. the lord never never put uh, put us in, in his plan bwana hakutuweka katika ratiba yake but because of the mercy of god kwa ajili ya neema ya bwana the because of the 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 the, the, the favor of the lord kwa, upon us kwa ajili ya kibali ya bwana kwetu we were grafted in tuliwekezwa and now na sasa we are able to celebrate tunaweza sherekea we are able to move along tunaweza tembea nalo with this beautiful salvation na hii wokovu ya kupendeza sana the salvation through the blood of jesus wokovu kupitia damu ya yesu the salvation we obtained at calvary wokovu ambao tulipata calvaryni that we were redeemed a kwamba tulikombolewa You can imagine the Lord was saying yesterday. Unaweza fikiri tu Bwana alikuwa anasema jana. That the Lord himself Ya kwamba Bwana mwenyewe had to unplug the branches. Ilibidi ya kwamba angoe zile I think cut cutting is the better word. He had to cut the branches. Ilibidi akate zile matawi. The branch our branches of unbelief. Ile matawi ya kutoamini when we were still over there worshiping omieri wakati ambapo bado tulikuwa pale tukimwabudu omieri worshiping uh, oleibon tukiabudu tuki oleibon worshiping the mountains tukiabudu milima worshiping the waters tukiabudu maji the lord had to cut off those branches ilibidi bwana angoe ama akate zile matawi zote that we may be saved ili sisi tupate kuokolewa that we may be grafted into the plan ya kwamba sasa tuwekeshwe katika ile mpangilio blessed people watu wa dhamana this salvation was only meant for israel hii wokovu ilikuwa tu ni ya wanaisraeli but the lord had mercy upon us lakini bwana alituhurumia and grafted us in akatuwekesha ndani so there was a serious warning that came kwa hivyo ilikuwa ni onyo kuu sana that we are not supposed to 
play around with our salvation. The price that Jesus Christ paid there at the Calvary was a very very serious price. So we are not supposed to joke around with our salvation. And so today I know we are all aware that we are sitting at the end times the times we are in at the moment wakati ambapo masaa ambayo tuko kwa sasa masaa ambayo tuko kwayo ni nyakati za mwisho ni nyakati za mwisho we are able to see from the signs tunaweza ona kutokana na ishara from all the events that are happening Kuwa, across the globe zile mambo zote ambazo zinafanyika dunia yote that is the time we are sitting hiyo ndio wakati ambapo tuko kwayo a time when wakati ambapo evil has really really mounted zile ma- mauovu imepanda kiwango cha juu sana there is a lot of evil kuna mauovu mengi sana we are able to see the signs of uh, the end times tunaizaona ishara za wakati wa mwisho the many earthquakes including the recent one at turkey miteko ya ardhi hata kujumuisha iliyofanyika hivi karibuni the many many false prophets kuna zile maunabii za uongo those are signs hizo ni ishara that speaks to us inayotunenea that time is over ya kwamba wakati umeisha and so na kwa hivyo there is need for us kunayo hitaji kwetu to be spiritually awake tupate kuwa macho kiroho there is need for spiritual alertness Tuna, tupate kumakinika kiroho that we may be uh, alert spiritually ya kwamba tupate kumakinishwa kiroho yes that we may be alert spiritually ya kwamba tupate kumakinika kiroho so today kwa hivyo leo By the help of the Lord. Kwa, ku, kwa msaada wa Bwana. We are going to talk on this topic. Tunaenda kupambana na hii mada. Spiritual alertness. Ile umakinifu wa kiroho. Spiritual alertness. Umakinifu wa kiroho. Right now. Sasa hivi. There is need for being uh, there is need for us to be spiritually alert. Kuna hiyo hitaji kwetu sisi kumakinika kiroho. You can all agree with me. Mnaweza kubaliana na mimi. You can see the many fall that is around. Mnaweza ona zile michezo mingi ambazo ziko. Yeah, outside the, the, the churches. Pale nje kwenye makanisa. People have even changed the gospel. Watu wote wamebadilisha neno. They, they no longer preach the true gospel. Hawahubiri injili ya kweli tena. The gospel that speaks the fear of God. Injili ambayo inanenea hofu ya Bwana. The gospel that gives glory unto the Lord. Injili ambayo inapeana utukufu The gospel, the gospel that gives that commands the coming of the, the, the coming judgment of the lord injili ambayo inaamrisha ile kukuja hukumu wa bwana hukumu wa bwana you see unaona that is what that is that is where we are sitting at hapo ndipo mali ambapo tunakaa so today the lord is going to uh help us understand bwana anaenda tusaidie leo kuelewe and the lord is going to encourage each one of us bwana anaenda kuhimiza sisi sote you may be have uh, unaweza kuwa ulikuwa low spiritual unaweza kuwa ya kuwa ulikuwa chini kiroho but today from this word lakini leo kutokana na hili neno the lord is going to strengthen your faith bwana ataimarisha imani yako is going to strengthen your spirit man ataimarisha imani yako you are longer going to remain the same ya kwamba hautabakia sawia tena so in tackling this topic kwa hivyo tukiangalia hii mada today i'm going to measure on one serious aspect leo nitaangalia mada moja and this uh, on prayer devotion to prayer kuhusiana na maombi kujitoa kwa maombi being devoted to prayer kukua na maombi kujitoa kwa maombi that aspect is a very very important aspect hiyo ni jambo la kumaanisha sana prayer is a very very important commodity maombi ni jambo moja kuu sana for us to attain spiritual alertness kwetu sisi tupate kubaki kiroho I remember too well ninakumbuka vizuri and i know you remember too well na najua unakumbuka the entire ministry of the messiah jesus christ we can see very clearly that in his entire ministry there is one very very major commodity that he had kuna jambo moja ambalo there is one of the serious commodities kuna jambo moja kumaanisha sana that he exalted ambaye alikweza very very much alikweza sana in his entire ministry katika maisha yake yote and that commodity was prayer na hiyo ilikuwa ni maombi jesus could pray yesu angeomba pray as much as possible angeomba na kuomba na kuomba and we see this through his youthful life lakini unaona katika maisha yake we see very well this through his youthful life tunaona vizuri 
through his youthful life kupitia maisha yake ya ujana that at the age of 12 years ya kwamba katika ile umri wa miaka 12 he was at the altar read alikuwa katika madhabahu tayari and even asking serious questions na atakiuliza maswali za kumaanisha sana answering answering very serious answers na akijibu majibu ya kumaanisha sana before the high priest that were there at that time mbele ya kuhani ambao walikuwa pale wakati ule and the high priest were very very much shocked na kuhani walishangaa sana which boldness is that je hii hi ni ujasiri kiasi gani what man of boldness is that je ni ujasiri kiasi gani and we know very well na tunajua vizuri throughout his ministry ya kwamba maisha yake yote ya kwamba appointed his disciples baada ya ku, 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 ku kuchagua wanafunzi wake na kuwapatia ile kazi we see very well time and again tunaona vizuri sana kila wakati the messiah jesus christ messiah yesu he really really encourage his disciples alihimiza wanafunzi wake to launch their foundation on prayer wapate kujiwekesha katika maombi and we are going to see very very well tunaweza kuona hapa vizuri so today kwa hivyo leo as we now narrow down to this uh, aspect the devotion tuna, to prayer tunapoangalia tuna hii hii hi mada maombi there are three major items that we are going to kuna jambo tatu ambao tutaangalia one of it being underscoring the gravity of prayer ya moja underscoring the gravity of prayer kudhibitisha nguvu ya maombi katika maisha yetu in our christian life katika maisha yetu ya kikristo if i continue kabla niendelee you see underscoring the gravity you know you know what we were created ya kwamba tuliumbwa that we may worship ili tupate kuabudu and through that worship there is a protocol that was laid down haleluya haleluya so hivyo as christians the moment we received salvation kama wa kristo punde tu tulipopokea uokovu through that salvation kutokana na huo uokovu we were saved tuliokolewa and we see na tunaona most of most of the cases most times wakati mwingi we find out that christians tunapata kwamba wa kristo think that sometimes when you join christianity christianity wanafikiria ya kwamba wakati ulipojiunga katika ukristo ba utapata maisha kuwa rahisi they never understood hawakuwahi elewa that christian life ya kwamba maisha ya mkristo is a spiritual battle ni vita vya kiroho christian life is a spiritual battle maisha ya kikristo ni vita vya kiroho they never understood that hawakuelewa hivyo so today the lord is going to help us hivyo leo hii bwana anaenda kutusaidia to underscore the gravity kusisitiza uzito another aspect we are going to item we are going to cover hivyo kipenge kingine ambalo tutashughulikia is why should we be talking about prayer at such a time ni kwa nini tuzungumuze kuhusu maombi kwa wakati kama huu that is just a continuation hiyo tu ni kufululiza of underscoring the gravity of prayer at this moment ya kusisitiza maombi wakati huu another aspect that we will deal with kipenge kingine ambalo tutashughulikia what are the importance of being devoted to prayer je umuhimu ni upi wa kujitolea katika maisha ya maombi maybe if we understand the importance huenda labda tukielewa umuhimu our prayer life will no longer remain the same maisha yetu ya maombi haitabakia sawia as a christians kama wa kristo ya kwamba tunapojitolea katika maombi ya kwamba tunapojitolea katika maombi tukitambua umuhimu if we understand the importance tukitambua umuhimu then we are going to take prayers seriously hivyo tutachukulia maombi kwa kumaanisha at personal level katika nafasi ya mtu kibinafsi i told you the ministry of jesus niliwaambia huduma ya yesu he used to go in secret places and pray for himself alikuwa anaenda pahali pasiri na kuomba peke yake he was so much devoted alikuwa amejitolea sana very very much devoted amejitolea sana and that is what we see he used to do na hiyo ndo kile ambacho tunaona alikuwa akitenda how he used to encourage his disciples jinsi alivyokuwa akihimiza wanafunzi wake and this is the way ya kwamba hii ndo njia at one point we see it teaching we see him teaching his disciples how to pray kwa wakati mmoja tunamuona akiwafundisha wanafunzi wake akiwafundisha wanafunzi wake jinsi ya kuomba another item that we will cover kipenge kingine ambacho tutashughulikia is the consequences of prayerlessness ni athari za kutokuomba the consequences of 
failing to pray before the Lord at such a time. Matara ya kukosa kuomba kwa Bwana wakati kama huu. We are going to understand very well. Hivyo tunaenda kuelewa vizuri. The Bible has spoken has spoken as uh, the Bible has spoke about prayer in a very very vast manner. Kwa sababu Biblia imezungumza kuhusu maombi kwa njia ya upana sana. And we are going to see here. Na tunaenda kutizama hapa. What the Bible talks kile ambacho Biblia kinazungumza about devotion to prayer. Kuhusu kujitolea kwa maisha ya kuomba. I want to begin by the book of Matthew chapter 26. Ningependa kuanza kwa kitabu cha Mathayo mlango wake wa 26. Verse 41. Mstari wa 44 na moja. This is during Jesus ministry. Hii ni wakati wa huduma ya Yesu. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. Mathayo 26 mstari wa 44 na moja. Okay, the Bible says Okay, let me start from verse 40 Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping Couldn't you uh, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour he asked Peter Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak Kisha akarudi kwa wanafunzi wake na kuwakuta wamelala. Akamuuliza Petro, "Je, ninyi wanaume hamkuweza kukesha pamoja nami kwa saa moja? Kesheni na muombe msije mkaanguka majaribuni." Hakika, roho iko radhi lakini mwili ni dhaifu. You see very clearly tunaona kwa wazi kabisa that Jesus found the disciples ya kwamba Yesu aliwapata wanafunzi sleeping wakilala instead of praying they were sleeping badala ya kuomba walikuwa wakilala currently hivi sasa the reason why this generation sababu ambayo kizazi hiki has failed to meet the standards of the Lord. Imekosa kutimiliza viwango vya Bwana. One of the reasons is sababu moja wapo ni kwamba they have not have neglected prayer. Wamepuuzilia mbali maombi. People are sleeping. Watu wanalala. People are not awake. Watu hawajaamka. Yet Jesus himself encourage us ili hali Yesu mwenyewe anatuhimiza during the end times ya kwamba nyakati za mwisho there is more need for us to be spiritually alert kuna hitaji kubwa sana kwetu sisi kuwa makinifu kiroho so due to that kwa sababu ya hiyo we find out that tulipata kwamba we find out that tulitambua kwamba tunapata kuwa tunapata kuwa people are not sensitive anymore watu hawajamakinika at the moment you see people are never sensitive to the things of the lord the wa- matters of the lord na wakati wote unapoona kwamba watu hawajamakinika kwa maswala ya Mungu that is one major problem that occurs hiyo ni shida kubwa sana inayotukumba if you don't pray iwapo hauombi So this generation has been sleeping. Hivyo kizazi hiki kimekuwa kikilala. And now we are seeing the fall all over. Na sasa tunaona mwanguko kote kote. LGBTQ being passed as a law. Kuna witi na ushoga ikipitishwa kama sheria. Where is the church when these laws are being passed? Iko wapi kanisa wakati sheria hii inapitishwa? That means that there is some failure somewhere. Inamaanisha ya kwamba tumeanguka pale. People are never spiritually awake. Watu hawakukuwa makinifu kiroho. The church kiroho. itself is not spiritually awake. Kanisa lenyewe halijamakinika kiroho. That is why we see time and again. Na hiyo ndio kwa sababu tunaona mara kwa mara. The righteous prophets of the Lord. Manabii wakuu wa Bwana. They normally come to us time and again. Wanatujia mara kwa mara. Severally. Kila wakati. Why? Because there is that weakness. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu kuna huo udhaifu. We no longer pray. Hatuombi. We are never spiritual alert. Na sisi hatujamakinika so kiroho. We begin entering some lukewarm form of salvation as Christians. Hivyo tumeanza kuingia aina ya Ukristo uliovugu vugu. So, hivyo. 
prayer what is prayer for Basi. the new believers those who have just the visitors i welcome in the mighty name of jesus kwa ajili wa waumini ambao ni wageni wageni wote tunawakaribisha sana je maombi ni hii ni huduma ya tuba na hapa tunahubiri hapa tunahubiri utakatifu wa uhaki for the glorious coming of the messiah nasi twajiandaa kwa ajili ya kuja kwa utukufu so kwa masihi the believers and most of us here kwa sababu ya waumuni wa wageni na wengi wetu hapa prayer is essentially a one way of communicating communing with god kimsingi maombi ni njia moja ya kushiriki na Mungu na Mungu fellowshipping with God kushiriki na Mungu speaking with God ukizungumza na Mungu you see unaona so it is one of the primary way by which you have you can communicate with God ni njia moja wapo ya kimsingi ya kuzungumza na Mungu both bringing to him our thanks tukimletea shukrani zetu petitions maombi requests dua and also hearing from him directly na pia kusikia moja kwa moja kutoka kwake most of the time wakati mwingi you hear somebody telling you utamsikia mtu akikwambia that i don't know how to pray ya kwamba sijui jinsi ya kuomba how am i able to pray nitaomba vipi there is a difficulty i'm facing kuna ugumu na ukumbana nao i will tell you nitakuambia that nobody knows how to pray ya kwamba hakuna yeyote ajuae kuomba we all depend on the help of the holy spirit sote tutegemea msaada wa roho mtakatifu that is why in the book of john, first john chapter 5 hiyo ndo kwa maana kwenye kitabu cha waraka wa kwanza wa yohana mlango wake wa 5 so before we go there kabla tuende pale Roma, romans chapter 8 from verse 26 are we there je tuko pale wa 28:26 so, Biblia inasema in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness we do not know what we ought to pray for but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans hivyo hivyo roho hutusaidia katika udhaifu wetu kwa sababu hatujui kuomba ipasavyo lakini roho mwenyewe hutuombea kwa uchungu kusikoweza kutamkwa haleluya haleluya praise the lord haleluya now we understand now that the holy spirit himself hivyo tunaelewa ya kwamba roho mtakatifu mwenyewe of helping each one of us yuko katikati ya kutusaidia kila mmoja wetu to pray before the lord ili kuomba mbele za bwana to bring our wordless groans before the lord kuleta ku kulia kwa uchungu kusikoweza kutamkwa mbele za bwana haleluya haleluya so hivyo even though you are so much weak in prayer hata kama wewe ni mudhaifu sana kwa kuomba the lord is encouraging you today bwana anakuhimiza leo hii you just have to be willing ya kwamba unahitajika tu kuwa na hiari you just have to be available upatikane tu for the lord kwa ajili ya bwana that he, you may commune with him ili kwamba ushiriki na yeye you may fellowship with him ili kwamba ushirikiane na yeye through his holy spirit na kupitia roho wake mtakatifu he is going to help you atakusaidia so what does it mean to be devoted because i i, I have already spoken about prayer hivyo inamaanisha nini kujitolea kwa maana tayari nimezungumza kuhusu kuomba being devoted kuwa kujitolea devotion kujitolea unasikia hiyo Kiswahili says very clearly kujitolea what does it mean to be devoted je inamaanisha nini kujitolea being devoted kujitolea means all heartedly inamaanisha kwa moyo wako wote giving yourself all heartedly ukijitoa mwenyewe ukijitoa mwenyewe kwa moyo wako wote kuelekea kitu fulani that you are not giving a 50% ya kwamba hautoi 50% you are giving the entire 100% unatoa asilimia moja yote so you realize now hivyo unagundua sasa it means to be continually steadfast inamaanisha pasipo kukoma umejitolea being continually and steadfastly praying without ceasing kwa kuendelea na pasipo kukoma unaomba that is when we now capture the being devoted at prayer so uh, it means you have given yourself away you have given your entire heart and it, you are so much devoted 100% and now you are 
seeking the Lord seizingly steadfastly without wasting time inamaanisha umejitolea kwa moyo wako wote kuelekea kwa kuomba na sasa unaomba bila kukoma kila wakati book of uh, first timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 kitabu cha waraka wa timotheo wa kwanza just to underscore ili kusisitiza why pre- we are talking about this topic at such a time ni kwa nini tuzungumuze kuhusu mada hii wakati huu first timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5 the bible says timotheo wa kwanza mlango wa tatu mstari wa tano biblia inasema but mark this there will be terrible times in the last days people will be lovers of themselves lovers of money second timothy chapter 3 Sorry for that. 2 Timothy chapter 3 from from verse 1. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal not lovers of good treacherous rash conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people waraka wa timotheo wa pili mlango wa tatu kuanzia mstari wake wa tano wa kwanza hadi wa tano lakini ya kupasa ufahamu jambo hili kwamba siku za mwisho kutakuwa na nyakati za hatari kwa maana watu watakuwa wenye kujipenda wenyewe wenye kupenda fedha wenye kujisifu wenye kiburi wenye kumkufuru Mungu wasiotii wazazi wao wasio na shukrani wasio watakatifu wasio na upendo wasiopenda kupatanishwa wasingiziaji wasiozuia tamaa zao wakatili wasiopenda mema wasaliti wakaidi waliojaa majivuno wapendao anasa zaidi kuliko kumpenda Mungu wakiwa na mfano wa utaua kwa nje lakini wakizikana nguvu za Mungu jiepushe na watu wa namna hiyo haleluya haleluya we see all these characters tunaona tabia hizi zote later we are going to understand baadaye tunaenda kuelewa that it is because of lack of prayer ya kwamba ni kwa sababu ya kukosa kuomba living a life of a lack of prayer prayerlessness kuishi kuishi ma- prayerlessness kuishi, being prayerless kuishi maisha ya kutokuomba not being devoted in prayer bila ya kujitolea kwa maombi creating time to have a word with the lord ukitengeneza nafasi kuzungumza na bwana because in verse number 5 kwa sababu kwenye kwenye mstari wa 5 we see people that have a form of godliness tunaona watu walio na mfano wa utaua kwa nje but they deny the power they are in lakini wanazikana nguvu za Mungu for me these people look like christians kwangu mimi watu hawa wanaonekana kukua wa kristo right now when you walk along the streets sasa hivi ukitembea kwenye mitaa somebody will tell you i'm a christian mtu atakwambia yeye ni mkristo born again nimeokoka i love the lord ninampenda bwana i'm full of the spirit nimejazwa roho But why do they deny the power? Lakini kwa nini wazikane nguvu? You are not able to see the power. Hauwezi kuziona nguvu za how they walk. Kulingana na vile wanavyotembea. From how they talk. Kulingana na vile wanavyozunguza. From how they dress. Kulingana na vile wanavyokalia. They lacking power. Wanakosa zile nguvu. So we are going to understand that very very well. Tunaenda kuelewa hiyo vyema kabisa. Now, sasa. Remember that. Kumbuka kwamba we rest on Lord against the flesh. Hatupigi vita vya nyama. We wrestle in a spiritual way. Sisi tunapiga vita vya kiroho. That is why I said. Hiyo ndo kwa sababu nilisema that Christianity. Ya kwamba Ukristo it is not a playground. Sio sio uwanja wa michezo. It is a battleground. Ni uwanja wa vita. And yesterday I 
the way the mighty prophet was speaking na hapo jana kama vile manabii wakuwa bwana alivyokuwa akizungumza we cannot play with our salvation ya kwamba hatuwezi kufanya mizaha na uokovu wetu we never play with our salvation hatuwezi fanya mizaha na uokovu wetu the way we received it kwa sababu jinsi tulivyoipokea it only took the glorious mercy of the lord iligarimu huruma za utukufu za bwana As I said, kama vile nilivyosema, and as the mighty prophet of the Lord was teaching us yesterday. Ya kwamba wakati manabii wa kuwa Bwana alipokuwa akitufundisha hapo jana, we were never grafted into the God's God's plans of salvation. Sisi hatukuwa sisi hatukuwa sehemu ya mpango wa wokovu wa Mungu. We were never in God's plan of salvation. Hatukuwa katika mpango wa wokovu wa Mungu. The Lord had to himself cut his branches. Ilibidi Bwana mwenyewe akate matawi yake. Matawi ya the gentle church. Matawi ya kanisa ya mataifa. All the unbelievers that we had hizo kutoamini yote ambayo tulikuwa nayo that we may be grafted ili kwamba tuweze kupandikizwa so, Christianity is not a job hivyo ukristo sio mzaha the moment you receive Christ punde unapompokea Kristo that is the beginning of your fight huo ndo mwanzo wa vita vyako and this fight is not physical fight na vita hivi sio vya kimwili it is a spiritual battle ni vita vya kiroho it means inamaanisha you have to go on your knees lazima uende kupige magoti and commune with god na ushiriki na mungu because we understand very well kwa sababu tunaelewa tuna, tuna vyema the battle belongs to the lord ya kwamba vita ni vya bwana you see unaona haleluya haleluya we together je tuko pamoja amen the book of first peter kitabu cha petro wa kwanza chapter 4 verse 7 mlango wa 4 mstari wa 7 the bible says biblia inasema the end of all things is near therefore be alert and sober and of sober mind so that you may pray haleluya haleluya biblia inasema katika waraka wa petro wa kwanza mlango wa 4 mstari wa saba mwisho wa mambo yote umekaribia kwa hiyo iweni na akili pia muwe na kiasi mkikesha katika kuomba why should we be talking about prayer such a time Je, kwa nini tuzungumuze kuhusu kuomba wakati kama huu? The Bible says there in the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. Biblia inasema hapa kwenye kitabu cha waraka wa Petro wa kwanza mlango wa 4 mstari wa 7. But the end is near. Ya kwamba mwisho umekaribia. We have to be alert and of sober mind. Sharti tuwe makini na akili timamu that we may pray ili kwamba tupate kuomba remember the bible said kumbuka biblia ilisema that at the end times ya kwamba nyakati za mwisho there will be a lot of evil kutakuwa na maovu mengi people will fall from the faith watu wataanguka kutoka kwenye imani there will be a lot of Uh, apostasy kutakuwa na ukengeufu and remember i told you we are sitting at the verge of the latter revival the verge of eternity we are sitting at a time when there is that revival that prepares the way for the glorious coming of the messiah nakumbukeni nilisema ya kwamba tuko katika uvivio tumeketi katika ukingo wa umilele so the end is here near blessed people hivyo mwisho umekaribia watu wa kamani nawe unaweza kuona hiyo that time is over ya kwamba muda umekwisha time is much spent muda umeyoyoma sana we are not supposed to be pushed hatustahili kusukumwa but the problem now we are going to understand the problem today lakini shida ambayo tutaielewa leo hii why should you be pushed to serve the lord je ni kwa nini usukumwe kumtumikia mungu wangu mimi kwa sasa i can say maybe you are insensitive naweza nikasema huenda umekosa umakinifu we are going to understand that tutaenda kuelewa hiyo also the book of first peter the same first peter pia katika waraka huo wa kwanza wa petro chapter 5 from verse 8 to 9 mlango wa 5 kuanzia mstari wa 8 hadi 9 the bible still reiterating Biblia pia inaendelea kusema The need for us to be spiritually alert. Hitaji kwetu kuwa makinifu kiroho. Verse 8 says, "Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour." Biblia inasema kwenye mstari wa 8, "Kesh muwe na kiasi na kukesha, maana adui yenu ibilisi" 
kama simba angurumae uzunguka zunguka akitafuta mtu ili apate kumeza We now understand the importance of prayer. Sasa tunaelewa umuhimu wa kuomba. We have begun understanding the importance of prayer. Tumeanza kufahamu umuhimu wa kuomba. That the devil himself. Ya kwamba shetani mwenye is outside there. Yuko kule nje. Seeking, anatafuta. Akitafuta one to devour. Yule mtu wa kumrarua. And it means na inamaanisha if you are not sober iwapo wewe hauna umakinifu if you are not alert kama hauko makini then the devil will devour you hivyo shetani atakurarua so each one of us hivyo kila mmoja wetu have a responsibility una jukumu the moment you cross over from the world punde ulipovuka kutoka ulimwenguni into the world of christianity ukiingia katika ulimwengu wa ukristo ni jukumu lako with the help of the holy spirit kupitia msaada wa roho sure mtakatifu you are devoted to prayers kuhakikisha kwamba umejitolea kuomba sometimes i normally pass wakati mwingine mimi hupita kwenye mitaa and you hear somebody saying na unasikia mtu akisema pastor uniombe Pasta uniombe. Uniombe ukifika kanisa uniombe. That person that is a Sunday. Hiyo ni Jumapili. But you see somebody telling you niombe. Lakini unasikia mtu akikwambia uniombe. And when you look at that person very well. Unapotazama mtu huyu kwa umakinifu. There is some form of godliness. Kuna mfano wa utauwa. That is lacking power. Ambao unakosa nguvu za Mungu. You're not able to see the power that is holiness. You never Hauwezi kuona nguvu ambayo ni utakatifu. Ni wala watu ambao walishaenda kanisani lakini wakatoka na unazaona tu he knows the gravity anajua uzito he understands the gravity of going to church anaelewa uzito wa kuenda kanisani prayer uzito wa kuomba but anakuambia uniombe lakini anakuambia uniombe blessed people watu wabarikiwa we have an opportunity tunayo fursa to also go before the lord and pray pia kuenda mbele za Bwana na kuomba so that we are able to fight our christian battles ili kwamba tuweze kupiga vita vyetu vya Kikristo the messiah himself masih mwenyewe ever since he stepped in this land tangia, uh, in the world tangia alipokanyaga ulimwenguni he never rested hakuwahi pumzika every time steadfastly praying kila wakati bila kukoma akiomba and we see how his life was not well na tuliona jinsi maisha yake hayakukua mema aliteseka sana aliteseka sana he suffered so much aliteseka sana he had no friends hakuwa na rafiki the holy spirit was his only true friend Rafi, roho mtakatifu ndiye aliyekuwa rafiki wake wa kipekee so if we profess to be christ followers hivyo iwapo tunadai kuwa wafuasi wa Yesu we have an example tunao mfano that we have to ex- that we can exemplify ambayo tunaweza iga so that we may not miss it ili kwamba tusiikose that we may be alert always ili kwamba tuwe makini kila wakati i want to take you through a chronology ningependa kuwapeleka kwenye mchakato of how the apostles ya kwamba jinsi gani mitume they used to fellowship walikuwa wakishiriki every time kila wakati they devoted themselves walijitolea to the apostles teaching katika mafundisho ya and in their fellowship na katika ushirika zao what marked their fellowship kila ambacho kilitia alama katika shirika zao the serious commodity that was there ile swala nyeti ambayo ilikuwepo pale they invested everything to prayer waliwekeza kila kitu katika maombi therefore open with me the book of acts chapter 2 hivyo fungua pamoja nami kitabu cha matendo mlango wa pili we are now tackling we are now beginning to tackle the importance of prayer sasa tumeanza kushughulikia umuhimu wa maombi tunapopitia haya the book of acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 kitabu cha matendo mlango wa pili kuanzia mstari wa 42 hadi 47 the topic is the fellowship of the believers the bible says from verse uh, the bible says from verse 42 Biblia inasema kuanzia mstari wa 42 They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles All the believers were together and had everything in common 
they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued uh, to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the faith of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Biblia inasema Nao wakawa wanadumu katika mafundisho ya mitume katika ushirika katika kumega mkate na katika kusali kila mtu akaingiwa na hofu ya Mungu nao miujiza mingi nayo miujiza mingi na ishara zikafanywa na mitume walioamini wote walikuwa mahali pamoja nao walikuwa na kila kitu shirika waliuza mali zao na vitu walivyokuwa navyo wakamgawia kila mtu kwa kadri alivyokuwa anahitaji siku zote kwa moyo mmoja walikutana ndani ya ukumbi wa hekalu wakimega mkate nyumba kwa nyumba kwa kila chakula chao kwa furaha na moyo mweupe wakimsifu Mungu na kuwapendeza watu wote kila siku Bwana akaliongeza kanisa kwa wale watu waliokuwa wakiokolewa. We see now how the apostles. Tunaona jinsi mitume. They devoted themselves. Walijitolea to the apostles teaching. Katika mafundisho ya mitume. At the moment, na wakati huo. We are receiving the word of God from one portal. Wakati huu tunapokea neno la Bwana kutoka kwa mtu mmoja. The portal of the mightiest mightiest prophets of the Lord. Na huyo ni manabii waku sana wa Bwana. And you see, na tunaona the apostles during those times. Wakati ule to the apostles that were teaching. Ni mitume waliokuwa wakifundisha. Yes, waliwapatia commission. The Lord had already commissioned them. Bwana alikuwa ashawapa tume. But number one aspect that I want you to capture there lakini kipenge cha kwanza ambao nilipenda mnase pale is that they first devoted themselves to the apostles teaching ni ya kwamba walijitolea kwa mafundisho ya mitume and through that na kupitia hayo we see at the further end tunaona mwisho kabisa during this day of this fellowship they were having kupitia shirika hii ambayo walikuwa nayo they are number in Christ waliongezeka idadi yao and prayer was never a lacking commodity na maombi haikukosekana mle right now we have been being, we have we are being taught by the mightiest prophets sasa hivi tunafundishwa na manabii wakuu wa bwana the question is swali ni have you been devoted to the teachings of the mightiest prophets of the lord je umejitolea kwa mafundisho ya manabii wakuu wa bwana je umejitolea are you devoted blessed to je umejitolea watu wa dhamani You see now that is where the problem comes. Sasa hapo ndipo shida inapokuja. Because we see the apostles devoted themselves they, they devoted themselves. Kwa sababu tunaona mitume walijitolea through the teaching to the teaching. Kwa mafundisho and through that teaching na kupitia mafundisho hayo. They were to understand. Walipata kuelewa that without prayer ya kwamba bila ya maombi they are incapable hawawezi without launching their fellowship on prayer bila ya kuwekeza ushirika wao kwa maombi hawawezi but here lakini hapa tukiambiwa twende fellowship we are nowhere to be found hatupatikani i don't know how many of us listens to the radio sijui ni wangapi wetu wanasikiliza radio ya masafa ya Yesu ni bwana because if you were devoted to that level kwa sababu kama ungekuwa umejitolewa hadi kiwango kile so that you are not you are, you are always tuning if you are able to tune in you are always tuning in ya kwamba kama unawezeshwa kusikiliza kila wakati unasikiliza because we know very well every time kwa sababu tunajua vyema kabisa kwamba kila wakati the mightiest prophet normally comes live on air manabii wa bwana huja moja kwa moja hewani with several teachings wakiwa na mafundisho kadhaa with many many powerful teachings na mafundisho mengi tena ya nguvu but have we devoted them to ourselves to even listening to the radio lakini je hata tumejitolea kusikiliza radio that is where the problem begins hapo ndipo shida inapoanzia so I want you to write this point. If you are able to write. Kama unawezeshwa. The importance of prayer now. Umuhimu wa maombi. Prayer enlightens our heart. Maombi inajuza mioyo yetu. 
the book of Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18. Kitabu cha Waefeso mlango wa kwanza mstari wa 18. Let us just read it. Wacha tusome. Prayer enlightens our heart. Maombi inajuza mioyo yetu. Remember the Bible has spoken very loudly. Kumbuka Biblia imenena tena kwa sauti kubwa. Concerning the conditions of our hearts. Kuhusiana na hali ya mioyo yetu. That our hearts are the most deceitful. Ya kwamba mioyo yetu ina udanganyifu mwingi. That out of our heart. Ya kwamba kutokana na mioyo yetu. Come sexual immorality. Inatokea dhambi ya uasherati. Idolatry. Kuabudu sanamu. Pride. Kiburi. And all manner of sin. Na kila aina ya dhambi. So let us see the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Hivyo wacha tuone wa Efeso mlango wa kwanza mstari wa 18. The Bible says, Biblia inasema, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. Ninaomba pia kwamba macho ya mioyo yenu yatiwe nuru ili mpate kujua tumaini mloitiwa. Haleluya. Haleluya. Whenever we pray. Wakati wowote tunapoomba. Whenever we create time. Wakati wowote tunapotengeneza wakati. Maybe in the morning very early. Inaweza kuwa ni asubuhi mapema. The evening late hours. Jioni masaya jioni. Any time you devote yourself to prayer. Wakati wowote unapojitolea kuomba. That time that you have created for you to communicate with God. Wakati huo ambao umetengeneza ili kwamba ushiriki na Mungu. I want you to understand. Ningependa uelewe that for your heart. Ya kwamba kwa moyo wako for the eyes of your heart. Ili macho ya moyo wako to be able to understand. Ipate kufahamu the reason why you were called. Sababu uliyoitwa You have to invest in prayer. Lazima ujitolee kwa maombi. That is that is that is that is that is what it means. That is what uh, means by prayer enlightens our heart. Hiyo ndo maana ya kusema ya kwamba maombi inatia nuru mioyo yetu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Number 2. Jambo la pili. Prayer strengthens our faith in God. Maombi inatia nguvu imani yetu ndani ya Mungu. Now from that point you understand very well. Kutokana na hoja hiyo utaelewa vyema that the reason why people have fallen away from faith. Ya kwamba sababu ambayo watu wameanguka kutoka kwa imani ya kweli. Their faith have become, uh, started becoming weak. Imani yao imefanyika dhaifu. They can no longer stand the, 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 the coming uh, tribulation, the tribulations that are there. Hawawezi kustahimili mateso yaliyopo. The reason why that happens sababu hiyo kutendeka is because they have neglected prayer. Ni kwa sababu wamepuuzilia mbali kuomba. So they are doing their Christi- Christian work. Hivyo wanatekeleza mtembeleo wao wa Kikristo minus prayer. Bila ya maombi. They are using their own efforts. Wanatumia juhudi zao wenyewe to serve the Lord. Kumtumikia Bwana. Remember in the Lord's service. Kumbuka katika huduma ya Bwana. You cannot do it with your own strength. Hauwezi kuitenda kwa nguvu zako mwenyewe. You can never achieve anything with your own strength. Hauwezi tekeleza chochote kwa nguvu zako mwenyewe. Now if you neglect prayer away. Hivyo ukipuzilia mbali maombi. Your faith will deteriorate. Imani yako itadhoofika. And the devil the, 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 the devil nae ibilisi who is out there prowling and looking for who to devour ambaye yuko kule nje anatangatanga kitafuta yule wa kuangamiza will start with you ataanza na wewe you can imagine unaweza wazia you have already received the light tayari umeishapokea nuru you have been given uh, a responsibility umepewa jukumu as christians kama mkristo those who have received the light kwa wale waliopokea nuru go outside there and bring many people kutoka kule nje ile kwamba kuleta watu wengi into this light ili kuingia katika nuru hii and you are here as a christian na wewe uko hapa kama mkristo you no longer pray hauombi you don't have faith anymore hauna imani tena and slowly by slowly na pole pole kwa pole pole if that habit continues iwapo uraibu huo utazidi you find yourself in a place of lukewarm utajipata mahali pa uvugu vugu in a gray area mahali ambapo si nyeupe si no nyeupe wewe si moto nor hot wala si baridi ukiambiwa we are going to crusade 
ukiambiwa tunaenda kwenye mkutano wa hadhara because your faith has deteriorated kwa sababu imani yako imedhoofika your, your spirit has no power roho yako haina nguvu to overcome the flesh kushinda mwili so you are you are busy listening to your flesh hivyo wewe umejishughulisha kusikiliza mwili wako niko na njaa niko na njaa sijui niko yaje you know the flesh how the mwili. flesh communicates jinsi mwili inavyozungumza na wewe i am tired i cannot go nimetoka siwezi kuenda i have quite a lot because now your mind is not being controlled by the spirit niko na maneno mengi kwa sababu sasa mawazo yako haiongozwi na roho mtakatifu your mind is now being controlled by the flesh mawazo yako yanaongozwa na mwili wako you have been called for a fellowship umeitwa kwenda ushirika but your mind the spirit is very willing roho ina hiari kabisa but because of your flesh lakini kwa sababu ya mwili wako because you are governed by the flesh kwa sababu umetawaliwa na mwili instead of going to fellowship badala ya kwenda ushirika you are going to eat viazi outside there unaenda kula viazi kule nje instead of going to uh, fellowship badala ya kwenda ushirika you are going to another fellowship maybe watching football unaenda ushirika mwingine huenda ni kutazama mpira wa kandanda we have to be very careful blessed lazima tuwe makinifu so prayer strengthens our faith in christ hivyo imani inatia nguvu imani yetu ndani ya kristo this is a very very important commodity that as christians na hii ni swala nyeti kwetu sisi kama wa kristo we have to embrace prayer lazima tukumbatie maombi a christian who does not pray mkristo ambaye haombi is a sinful christian ni mkristo mtenda dhambi you will struggle with a lot of sin in your life utangangana na dhambi mingi maishani mwako you will struggle so much utangangana sana so for us to attain uh, the true holiness of the lord hivyo kwetu sisi kufikia utakatifu wa kweli wa Mungu for us to stand the faith kwetu sisi kusimama katika imani for us to be counted kwetu sisi kuhesabiwa we have to invest our salvation or we have to anchor our salvation on prayer lazima tusimamishe wokovu wetu katika maombi we have to do that Mr. lazima tutende hayo watu wabarikiwa through prayer kupitia maombi we are able to receive the lord's mercy tunaweza tunapata kupokea huruma za bwana as we confess our sins before the lord tunapokiri dhambi zetu mbele za bwana the lord is very very much faithful bwana ni mwaminifu tena sana to forgive our sins kusamehe dhambi zetu to relent to relent his judgment upon us kugairi hukumu yake juu yetu let us read the book of second chronicles chatusome mambo ya nyakati ya pili from verse uh, from chapter 7 kuanzia mlango wa saba was 14 mstari wa 14 biblia inasema vyema kabisa that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land mambo ya nyakati wa pili mlango ni wa 7 mstari wa 14 kama watu wangu wanaoitwa kwa jina langu watajinyenyekeza na kuomba na kutafuta uso wangu na kuacha njia zao mbaya basi nitasikia toka mbinguni na kuwasamehe dhambi yao na nitaiponya nchi yao haleluya haleluya the reason why we are not uh, we, are, we don't find mercy sababu ambayo hatupati huruma is because we have not launched we have not devoted ourselves to prayer ni kwa sababu hatujajiwekeza katika kuomba the bible also encourages us ya biblia inatuhimiza come let us reason together ndio the lord is calling you to reason with him bwana anakuita ili kwamba usemezane naye the way your sins are read as crimson ya kwamba ingawaje dhambi yako ni nyekundu he will make you to be white ataifanya kuwa nyeupe haleluya Hallelujah. So we, our failure to devote ourselves to prayer. Hivyo kukosa kwetu kujitolea katika maombi. Has made us not to be forgiven. Imetusababisha sisi kukosa kusamehewa. I want to tell you this is the, the, the work of the enemy. Nami ningependa kuelezea kwamba hii ni kazi ya adui. The enemy has trapped quite a lot of people. Adui amenasa watu wengi sana. And he has already even entered the church. Na pia ameingia kanisani. And we see 
secretly na tunaona ni kwa siri is drawing even christians away from prayer pia anavuta wa kristo mbali na maombi so you find out that hivyo utagundua kwamba analeta ile there is that fear analeta hiyo kuogopa there is that fear kuna huo kuogopa i want to tell you that when you pray ningependa kuambia unapoomba the Lord, the spirit of god fills you Roho wa Bwana anakuhisi, anakujaza. You are you are filled by the Holy Spirit. Unajazwa kwa roho wa mtakatifu. And so you become bold. Hivyo unakuwa jasiri. You don't become a coward. Haufanyiki muoga. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You become somebody who is bold and confident. Unafanyika mtu mwenye ujasiri. So the enemy has essentially done this. Hivyo kimsingi adui amefanya hivi. He has taken you out of the life of prayer amekuondoa kutoka maisha ya maombi and now you have this fear in you na sasa una huu uoga ndani yako you, you feel like you're condemned unahisi kana kwamba umeshahukumiwa because you are now in sin i told you a, 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 play, a christian that does not pray kwa sababu tayari uko kwenye dhambi nilikuwa nimekwisha kuambia mkristo ambaye haombi is a sinful prayer is a sinful christian ni mkristo mwenye dhambi haleluya Hallelujah. So the devil takes you out of the, 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 the normal habit of praying. Hivyo shetani anakuondoa katika ile tabia ya kawaida ya kuomba. And slowly by slowly you, are, you, you start sinning. Na polepole kwa polepole unaanza kutenda dhambi. You sin, you sin, you sin. Unatenda dhambi na kutenda dhambi na kutenda dhambi. And now sasa because you don't have you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have that You, 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 the level of your holy spirit has drawn down yani mwenda chini kwa sababu kiwango chako cha roho mtakatifu kimeteremka chini sana so the enemy has authority over you hivyo adui ana mamlaka juu yako so that you are condemned with the sins kiwango kwamba unahukumiwa kwa zile dhambi and you have that fear to confess it na wewe una hiyo uoga ya kukiri you don't want to confess it hautaki kukiri and you end up being a sinner forever na wewe unaishia kuwa mwenye dhambi milele. Is that that is that dreadful? Je, hiyo haitishi? That is very dreadful blessed people. Hiyo inatisha watu wabakiwa. So it means. Hivyo inamaanisha. However much. Ki hata kama It doesn't matter you have sinned how how how, how you, it doesn't matter the level of sin you've done before the Lord. Haitalishi umetenda dhambi kiwango kipi machoni pa Bwana? The Bible says very clearly we have read very clearly there. Biblia inasema tumeomba tumeona kwa wazi hapa. If you humble yourself. Ya kwamba iwapo utajinyenyekesha and repent. Na utubu and pray. Na uombe. The Lord is able to heal you. Bwana anaweza kukukonya. The Lord is able to restore you. Bwana anaweza kukurejesha. So let us continue the work. Hivyo wacha tuzidi katika mtembeo. Let us fight this battle. Wacha tupige vita hivi. See the enemy has one purpose. Adui anakusudi moja tu to make you not go to be devoted to prayer. Kuhakikisha kwamba wewe haujajitolea kuomba. Even though it, if it has taken uh, the entire day you have not prayed. Hata kama imechukua siku mzima haujaomba. Try as much as possible. Jaribu iwezavyo. And just say a word before the Lord. Na use, utamke neno mbele za Bwana. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Muulize Roho Mtakatifu akusaidie. Before you know, kabla kugundua You will realize that you have already prayed before the Lord. Uta utatambua kwamba tayari umeomba mbele za Bwana. The spirit that the Lord gave us. Roho ambaye Bwana alitupa is not timid. Yeye si muoga. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That spirit he gave us was to make us be confident in Christ Jesus. Roho huyo ambaye alitupa kusudi yake ni kutupa ujasiri ndani ya Yesu. That there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Ya kwamba hakuna hukumu kwa wale walio ndani ya Yesu Kristo. Because we are not under the law of sin anymore. Kwa sababu hatuko chini ya sheria ya dhambi. But under the law of spirit. Lakini chini ya sheria ya roho. So blessed people. Hivyo watu wabarikiwa. It is very very much important. Ni muhimu tena sana. For us to invest our salvation our Christianity. Kwa sisi kuwekeza maisha yetu ya Ukristo. Back to prayer kwa maombi James chapter 5 verse 16 Yakobo 5:16 The Bible says The Bible encourages us Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective Yakobo mlango wa 5 mstari wa 
16 Biblia inasema Kwa hiyo ungamia neni makosa yenu ninyi kwa ninyi na kuombeana ili mpate kuponywa maombi ya mwenye haki yana nguvu tena yanafaa sana Haleluya Haleluya That the Lord is encouraging us Ya kwamba Bwana anatuhimiza We have to confess our sins before him Ya kwamba lazima tuungame dhambi zetu mbele zake That we may be healed ili kwamba tupate kuponywa That is a responsibility we have to do. Hiyo ndio jukumu lazima tutekeleze. Failure of us confessing. Sisi kukosa kukiri we will not be forgiven. Hatutasamehewa. We won't be healed. Hatutaponywa. Prayer also pia maombi keeps us spiritually awake. Inatusababisha tukeshe kiroho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The times we are in currently. Nyakati ambazo tumo ndani yake sasa hivi. It instructs us inatuagiza to be spiritually alert. Tukeshe kiroho. If at all we are interested to enter the glorious kingdom of God. Kama kweli tungependa kuingia katika ufalme wa utukufu wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible now. Biblia sasa. In the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 14 Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy without holiness no one will see the Lord Waebrania 12 14 Biblia inasema Tafuteni kwa bidii kuwa na amani na watu wote na huo utakatifu ambao bila kuwa nao hakuna mtu atakayemuona Bwana. So we have to make an effort blessed people. Hivyo lazima tufanye juhudi. In our duty of making an effort. Na katika jukumu letu la kufanya kila juhudi. Of making peace with all men. Ya kuwa na amani na watu wote. And pursuing holiness. Na kufuata utakatifu. We have to be prayerful. Lazima tuwe wa kuomba. We need the Lord so much. Tumuhitaji Bwana sana. We have to develop a habit of fellowshiping with the Lord. Lazima tutengeneze hii tabia ya kushiriki pamoja na Bwana. Remember nobody enters heaven by his own strength. Kumbuka hakuna yeyote anayeingia mbinguni kupitia nguvu zake mwenyewe. Everybody has a responsibility. Kila mtu anao jukumu. Even our blessed Dr. Bishop has a responsibility. Hata naibu askofu wetu mkuu barikiwa ana jukumu yake. To make sure that she enters. Kuhakikisha kwamba ameingia. That also implies to us. Na hiyo pia inaashiria kwetu. We also have the same responsibility. Tuna hiyo jukumu lile lile. Remember the benchmark is still same. Kumbuka kiwango ni ile ile. But without holiness. Ya kwamba bila ya utakatifu. Nobody will see the glorious kingdom of God. Hakuna yeyote atakayeiona ufalme wa utukufu so wa Mungu. Every day in our, in our every aspect of our lives. Hivyo kila siku katika kila sehemu ya maisha yetu. We have to be spiritually Lazima praying before the Lord. Katika roho tuombe mbele za Bwana. That the Lord may help us. Ili kwamba Bwana atusaidie. Especially at this time. Haswa wakati huu. If you are not be praying. Iwapo haujakuwa ukiomba. Whenever we call when, whenever we are, we are called upon to pray even together here at the altar. Wakati wa wote tunapoitwa kuomba hata kwa pamoja hapa kwenye matabahu. If you have not been coming iwapo haujakuwa ukija the lord is encouraging you bwana anakuhimiza the lord is loving you today bwana anakupenda siku ya leo the lord is rebuking you today bwana anakukemea siku ya leo if you don't pray ya kwamba iwapo hautaomba you are a sinner wewe ni mwenye dhambi if you don't pray you are a sinner hallelujah iwapo hautaomba wewe ni mwenye dhambi so you have to start making your ways hivyo lazima uanze kuandaa mapito yako you want to recalibrate your steps lazima ukadirie tena hatua zako and start investing in prayer na uanze kuwekeza katika maombi we have read there that the prayer of a righteous person tumesoma pale ya kwamba maombi ya mwenye haki is very powerful unto the lord ina nguvu mbele za bwana so for us to make it hivyo kwetu sisi kufaulu prayer must be part and parcel of our lives maombi lazima iwe sehemu ya maisha yetu even in our ministries hata katika huduma zetu you may wonder why you are struggling in your ministry unaweza shangani kwa nini unangangana katika huduma yako maybe you are an usher wewe ni shemanzi maybe you are a worshiper wewe ni mwabudu maybe you are a pastor wewe ni mchungaji 
Maybe you're a sheep of Christ. Uenda wewe ni kondoo la Kristo. You may wonder why you are struggling in your salvation. Unaweza kuwa ukishangani kwa nini unanang'ana katika ma mtembo wako wa Kikristo it is because ni kwa sababu you have not invested in prayer haujawekeza kwa maombi you have not put your foundation on prayer haujaweka msingi wako katika maombi your maombe. ministry is not under the foundation of prayer huduma yako haijawekezwa kwenye maombi you are doing your ministry because of your skills maybe you are a keyboardist unatenda like unatekeleza tu huduma yako kwa sababu huenda una hiyo una hiyo kipawa labda wewe ni mchezaji kinanda kama mimi but you are not depending upon the lord lakini haumtegemei bwana you are a worshiper wewe ni mwabudu huo but you have not invested your ministry on prayer lakini haujawekeza huduma yako kwa maombi you are just there because you have a good voice uko tu pale kwa sababu una sauti nyororo haleluya haleluya so that is the problem basi hiyo ndo shida that is the problem blessed people hiyo ndo shida watu barikiwa even our ministries kwa sababu hata huduma yetu the devil himself is fighting our ministries shetani mwenyewe anapiga vita huduma yetu we have seen how the ministry of the mighty prophets tumeona jinsi huduma ya manabii wakuwa bwana how is being caught jinsi anavyopigwa vita but you can imagine the many times the mighty prophets fast lakini unaweza wazia ni mara mingi kiasi gani manabii wakuwa bwana wamefunga sa for many days kwa siku mingi they are just fasting and praying wanafunga tu na kuomba for the missions of the lord kwa ajili ya huduma za bwana haleluya haleluya so it is a blessed thing to pray blessed people hivyo ni jambo la barikiwa kwetu sisi kuomba we have very very much examples tuna mifano mingi sana katika biblia but encourages us to pray inayo tuhimiza inayo tuhimiza tuombe Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So from today. Basi tangia leo. Let us embrace prayer in our ministries. Wacha tukubali kuomba katika huduma zetu. Let us embrace prayer in our salvation. Wacha tukumbatie maombi katika wokovu wetu. And you will witness the difference, blessed people. Nawe utashuhudia tofauti. You will witness the difference. Utashuhudia tofauti. Right now the fasting and prayer session. Sasa hivi awamu ya kufunga na kuomba. It's almost approaching. Karibu inafika. Because of the uh, I Ivory Coast ministry mission kwa sababu ya ile misheni ya Ivory Coast that the mighty prophets of the Lord will co- be conducting a healing service over there ambapo manabii wakuu sana wa Bwana watakuwa wanaendeza ibada ya upamunyaji kule please make an effort tafadhali tia bidii if you have never fasted kama hujawahi funga make an effort tia bidii the Lord is able to help you Bwana anaweza kukusaidia The Lord is able to help you Bwana anaweza kukusaidia So don't be afraid Hivyo usiogope You are not alone blessed people Hauko peke yako watu wa thamani It is only through prayer and fasting Nikupitia tu kufunga na kuomba We are able to defeat the flesh Tunaweza kushinda mwili And the problem here Na shida hapa It is the flesh Ni mwili It is the flesh blessed people Ni mwili watu wa thamani And the enemy has understood that very clearly Naye adui ameelewa vizuri kabisa. That is why you see him taking you out of that life of prayer, daily prayer and devoting yourself to prayer. Hiyo ndo kwa sababu anakuondoa katika maisha ya kuomba kila siku kwa kujitolea. And you find yourself becoming weak. Na unajipata kuwa mdhaifu. Falling into temptations. Ukianguka kwenye madharibu. Your spirit is very very much willing. Roho yako ina hiari tena sana. But you are not you are not able to do that. Lakini hauwezi kutekeleza. Like right now. Kama vile sasa hivi. We have heard of the announcements. Tumesikia matangazo. That this Friday. Ya kwamba Ijumaa. We are going to have a very powerful kesha. Tutakuwa na mkesha mkuu sana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wapi shangwe expected shangwe. Wapi shangwe nilitarajia shangwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a very blessed thing, blessed people. Hilo ni jambo la baraka sana. During such sessions. During such uh, sessions. Kupitia awamu kama hii. That is where now we seek the Lord in prayer very well. Hapo ndipo tunamtafuta Bwana kupitia maombi. And he is able to sanctify us. Naye anaweza kututusafisha. He is able to strengthen our faith. Anaweza kutia nguvu imani yetu. And we are no longer being uh, we cannot be weighed by the trials of this world. Na sisi hatutalemewa na majaribu ya ulimwengu huu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have been blessed in prayer blessed. Lazima tuwekeze katika maombi through prayer kupitia maombi we are filled with the holy spirit tunajazwa kwa roho mtakatifu haleluya haleluya
Does somebody desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Je, kunae mtu anayetamani kujazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu? How many desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Ni wangapi wanatamani kujazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu? The answer is here blessed people. Jibu liko hapa. It is only through prayer. Ni kupitia tu maombi. That we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Ya kwamba tunapokea kujazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu. Wacha nikwambie jambo. You know we have the spirit man kuna mtu wa roho and the really the, the real you and the physical man that we see in you kuna, m- kuna let me just explain it again this is me who you ni mimi but there is that somebody who is inside me lakini kunae mtu aliye ndani yangu who is the original me ambaye ndiye mimi sasa who is the real me blessed ambaye sasa ndiye mimi so when you pray unapoomba this is what happens hivi hiki kile kinachotendeka your spirit man mtu wako wa kiroho does not feed on the food you eat yeye hali chakula unayokula haleluya the food that you eat daily chakula unayokula kila siku the spirit man does not feed on that mtu wa kiroho hali hiyo what the spirit man feeds on kile ambacho mtu wa kiroho anakula is prayer ni maombi it means inamaanisha on a daily basis kila siku if you fail to pray ukikosa kuomba you are starving your spiritual man unamtia njaa mtu wako wa kiroho and you, say, you know very well if you fail to eat physically na unajua unapokosa kukula chakula kawaida you grow weak unakuwa mdhaifu you become weak and weak and weak unadhoofika na kudhoofika na kudhoofika we have seen people dying out of hunger We have seen animals dying out of hunger. Tumeona mifugo yakifa so kutokana na inamaanisha in your daily walk as a Christian. Katika mtembo wako wa kila siku kama If you don't devote yourself to serious praying. Iwapo hautajitolea kwa maombi ya kumaanisha. You will find your spirit man will start being weak. Mtu wako wa kiroho atadhoofika. Your spirit man will be weakened. Mtu wako wa kiroho atadhoofika. And before you know, na kabla utambue, your faith is affected. Imani yako imeathirika. You no longer believe again. Hauamini tena. And you will have been fallen. You have utakuwa umeanguka. Utakuwa umeanguka. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe zetu kwa pamoja. So it is very very much important. Hivyo ni muhimu sana. The book of Acts chapter 4. Let me just highlight the importance of that prayer. Wacha tu niangazie umuhimu. Matendo 4. From verse 31. Kuanzia mstari wa 31. These are still the apostles. Hawa bado ni mitume. Every time they used to gather in different places. Kila wakati walikuwa wanakutana mahali pahali. Everywhere they, where they used to gather. To gather na kila wakati walipokuwa wakikutana wakikutana they prayed waliomba they used to pray so much walikuwa wanaomba sana and we can see from their lives na tunaweza tukaona kupitia maisha yao they were able to overcome quite a number quite serious challenges blessed people walishinda changamoto mazito mazito you can see apostle peter unaweza kumuona mtume petro He was hanged upside down. Yeah, yeah. He was crucified. Alisulubishwa kichwa ikiwa juu kichwa ikiwa chini miguju. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see the life he used to live. Lakini unatazama maisha aliyokuwa akiishi. Was anchored on prayer. Iliwekezwa kwa maombi. He was doing even the ministry itself. Hata huduma yenyewe was on prayer. Ilikuwa katika maombi. So the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 31. Matendo 4:31 The Bible says Biblia inasema These are now the apostles. Hawa sasa ni mitume. There is a place where they went to meet. Kuna mahali walipokwenda kukutana. And you see the Bible says Na Biblia inasema After they prayed the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Hallelujah. Haleluya. Walipokwisha kuomba, mahali pale walipokuwa wamekutanika pakatikiswa. Nao wote wakajazwa na Roho Mtakatifu, wakanena neno la Mungu kwa ujasiri. Haleluya. Haleluya. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We see now that. Tunaona sasa that they were gathered somewhere. Ya kwamba walikuwa wamekusanyika pahali. And when and, and this gathering in this gathering. Na katika huu mkusanyiko They were praying they were doing nothing else but praying. Hawako wanatenda jambo lingine lolote ila kuomba. But after they prayed, lakini baada ya kuomba, a phenomenal happened there. Jambo lilitendeka pale. 
that the place where they were standing the place where they were praying ya kwamba mahali walipokuwa wamesimama wakiomba was shaken terribly palitikiswa kabisa haleluya haleluya but one underscores the gravity of prayer hiyo inasisitiza unyeti wa kuomba that prayer can give you quite a lot that money cannot give you ya kwamba maombi itakupa mengi zaidi ambayo pesa haingekupa haleluya haleluya remember we need eternity kumbuka tuahitaji umilele only prayer can give you eternity blessed people ni maombi tu ambayo itakupa umilele if you today devote yourself to prayer iwapo leo hii utajitolea kuomba start being serious in praying ukianza kumaanisha katika kuomba doing personal uh, prayers ukifanya maombi ya kibinafsi and trusting upon the holy spirit nawe ukimtumainia roho mtakatifu you, you will slowly begin to see your life changing pole pole utaanza kuona maisha yako yakibadilika your life will start to be transformed your life will be transformed maisha yako yatabadilishwa your ministry will change huduma yako itabadilika you will find favor in your ministry utapata kibali katika huduma yako your, your, your ministry you will be anointed once again utapakwa mafuta mara tena holy spirit will anoint you anointing will increase roho wa mungu ataongeza upako wako and you will find that even your ministry na hata utapata huduma yako will be a blessing to people itakuwa baraka kwa watu i want to ask somebody here today ningependa kuuliza mtu hapa leo hii has your ministry been has your ministry has your ministry be a blessing to somebody je huduma yako imekuwa ya baraka kwa mtu Just ask yourself that question. Je, ulizvali hilo? If it has not been a blessing. Kama haijakuwa ya baraka. Then there must be something that has been lacking. Basi kuna jambo ambalo limekosekana. Prayer, blessed people. Maombi. Maybe the foundation is that maybe your ministry was never anchored on prayer. Uenda huduma yako haijawekezwa katika maombi. Yes, the Lord himself raised you. Ili hali ni Mungu mwenyewe aliyekuinua. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Haleluya. So, hivyo we see there now tunaona hapa sasa that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Ya kwamba walijazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu. Those that were gathering there. Wale waliokutanisha pale. They were bale. filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Walijazwa kwa roo, nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. And they began to speak the word of God boldly. Na waka, I want you to underline boldness. boldly. Na wakaanza waka kuzungumkunena neno la Mungu kwa ujasiri. Ningependa upigilie mstari kwa ujasiri. Boldness only comes through prayer blessed people. Ujasiri unapatikana kupitia ma- Ombi. And that is what the devil is fighting in your life. Na hitondo kile ambacho shetani anapiga vita maisha yako. That is what the devil doesn't want you to have. Hitondo kile ambacho shetani hangependa uwe nayo. Kwa maana unaona anapigana na maisha yako ya maombi. Ya kwamba kila saa unangangana, unataka kuomba, umeshapata shida. Haupati upenyo, you don't find breakthrough. How pain in your prayers you don't find breakthrough katika maombi yako wewe you haupeni you find just there you don't have anything to say unajipata tu uko pale hauna cha kusema but i know the lord is very very much faithful lakini nami ninajua bwana ni mwaminifu sana if we are going to be faithful iwapo tutabaki waaminifu if we are going to be decided iwapo tutaamua but from today henceforth ya kwamba kutokea leo na kuendelea we are going to anchor our salvation tutawekeza wokovu wetu on towards prayer tutasimamisha wokovu wetu juu ya maombi ourselves on a daily basis tukijitolea kila siku to feed the holy spirit kumlisha roho mtakatifu to feed the spirit man i am sorry to feed the spirit man in us kumlisha mtu wa kiroho ndani yetu haleluya haleluya that's the only the only food for the spirit man hiyo ndo chakula ya pekee ya mtu wa kiroho and so the, the bible says in the book of romans chapter 8 hivyo biblia inasema kwenye kitabu cha warumi 8 let us read there quickly wacha tusome kwa haraka romans chapter 8 from verse okay from verse 5 Warumi 8 kuanzia mstari wa 5 The Bible says Biblia inasema Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires The verse 6 The mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace Biblia inasema kwa maana wale wanaoishi kwa kufuata mwili huziweka nia zao katika vitu vya mwili 
lakini wale wanaoishi kwa kufuata roho huziweka nia zao katika mambo ya roho kwa maana kuwa na nia ya mwili ni mauti bali kuwa na nia inayoongozwa na roho ni uzima na amani haleluya haleluya now we understand better praise the lord sasa tunaelewa vizuri that the mind governed by the flesh ya kwamba nia inayoongozwa na mwili leads to death inaongoza ma- mauti the mind governed by the spirit na nia inayoongozwa na roho leads to life inaongoza uzimani because we understand very well kwa sababu tunafahamu vyema kabisa that flesh and blood ya kwamba mwili na damu will not inherit the kingdom of god havita uridhi ufalme wa Mungu so we have to feed the spirit man hivyo sharti tumlishe mtu wa roho that is the only person huyo ndo mtu pekee the true you huyo ambaye ni wewe kweli that will enter ambaye ataingia that will enter if he or she devotes himself ambaye ataingiwa iwapo yeye atajitolea kwa maombi and holiness na utakatifu amen amina so as we begin to wind up hivyo tunapoanza kumaliza i want to we want to now look at the perils tunataka kutazama the perils madhara of prayerlessness madhara ya kutokuomba consequences of lack of prayer consequences of failure to pray madhara ya kukosa kuomba haleluya haleluya are we together je tuko pamoja praise the lord bwana yesu asipiwe amen amina Point number I just wanted to write this point. Ningependa tu uandike hoja hizi. Point number 1. Hoja ya kwanza. One of the perils of prayerlessness. Moja wapo ya madhara ya kukosa kuomba is that it is the fastest and surest way to become a sinner. Ya kwamba ndio njia ya haraka tena hakika ya kukua mwenye dhambi the fastest and the surest way of becoming a sinner njia ya haraka na hakika ya kuwa mwenye dhambi is when you fail to pray ni wakati unapokosa kuomba when you fail to anchor your salvation on prayer unapokosa kusimamisha ukovu wako juu ya maombi number 2 jambo la pili prayerlessness is an outright and direct rebellion against god kukosa kuomba ni kuasi Mungu kwa wazi wazi kabisa it is actually rebellion before the lord hakika ni kuasi mbele za Mungu now you understand the gravity blessed people sasa unaelewa unyeti that whenever a day ends ya kwamba wakati wowote siku inapoisha and you have not prayed kabisa nawe haujaomba kabisa you have actually rebelled the lord hakika umemuasi Mungu that's why you see the bible say hiyo ndo kwa maana unaona biblia ikisema but the lord but lord lakini bwana we preach the word of god in your name tulilihubiri neno la bwana kwa jina lako what have we done umefanya nini it is because of rebellion rebellion is just a must of ukukwe umefanya yani you have done it physically the rebel physically ni kwa sababu umeasi na kuasi sio eti lazima ukoe umeasi kiasilia even failing to pray hata ukikosa kuomba that is outright rebellion rebellion before the lord hiyo ni kuasi waziwazi wazi mbele za bwana haleluya haleluya prayerlessness makes one become vulnerable to the devil kukosa kuomba inafanya mtu kushambuliwa kwa uraisi na shetani It makes you to become available to the devil. Inakufanya wewe kupatikana kwa uraisi na shetani. Haleluya. Haleluya. So you are very very much available. Hivyo wewe umepatikana kwa uraisi sana. If the enemy wants to strike you, iwapo adui angependa kukupiga, he can easily strike you. Kwa uraisi anakupiga. Because you have neglected prayer. Kwa sababu umepuuzilia mbali maombi. And we know when the enemy strikes you. Na tunajua wakati adui anapokugonga, is bad it's very bad ni mbaya sana 
Blessed people. Watu wabarikiwa. It is very very much important. Ni muhimu kabisa that we start investing in prayer. Ya kwamba tuanze kuwekeza katika kuomba. Let us ministries to prayer. Wacha tuwekeze huduma zetu juu ya kuomba ili kwamba Bwana atusaidie. Point number 4. Hoja ya 4. Prayerlessness destabilizes the, the faith of a Christian. Kukosa kuomba inayumbisha imani ya Mkristo. It destabilizes your faith. Inayumbisha imani yako. Every time wakati wowote you want to do the work of the Lord. Ungependa kufanya kazi ya Bwana. Because you lack the faith. Kwa sababu umeikosa ile imani. You find yourself not doing. Unajipata hautendi. You find yourself not believing in the even 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 in the mighty visitations. Unajipata hata hauamini hii mitembeleo mikuu. You become an unbelieving person. Unafanyika mtu usiyeamini. And that is how you fall away from sin. Na hivyo ndivyo unavyoanguka ndani ya dhambi. So it destabilizes the faith of a Christian. Hivyo inayumbisha imani ya Mkristo. So for us to receive stability in our salvation. Hivyo kwa tusisi kupokea kuimarishwa katika imani yetu. Sharti tuhakikishe that prayer is part of our salvation. Ya kwamba maombi ni sehemu ya wokovu wetu. Prayer is part of our uh, our lifestyle. Maombi ni sehemu ya mtindo wetu wa maisha. Haleluya. Haleluya. Point number 5. Hoja ya tano. A prayerless Christian. Mkristo asiyeomba essentially lacks the Holy Spirit. Anakosa Roho Mtakatifu kimsingi. They therefore become insensitive on the matters of the Lord. Hivyo hao hawana umakinifu kwa maswala ya Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The moment you fail to pray, unde unapokosa kuomba, you become you start becoming insensitive. Unakosa umakinifu. You are not serious on the works with on the matters of the Lord. Haumaanishi kwa maswala ya Mungu. You are just uh, unashindikiza watu. Unasindikiza watu. If people are going to crusade, iwapo watu wanaenda katika mikutano ya hadhara, you say amen but you are in the house. Unasema amina lakini wewe uko ndani ya nyumba. The matters of the Lord are not serious to you. Maswala ya Mungu haina uzito kwako. You don't view that crusade. Hautazami hiyo crusade as a privilege. Kama tunuku. For us to reach out to the lost souls outside there. Kwetu sisi kufikia nafsi zilizopotea kule nje. And so you are very very much insensitive. Hivyo wewe unakosa umakinifu kabisa. Most of the time you'll find yourself not even achieving the will of God. Wakati mwingi utajipata hautimizi mapenzi ya Mungu. You become a rebellious person. Unakuwa mtu muasi. Secretly. Kisiri. Unakuja tu Sunday you come to Sunday Unakuja tu Jumapili But you never found anywhere Lakini haupatikani popote Whenever we are needed Wakati wowote tunapohitajika Remember the Lord is looking for laborers Kumbuka Bwana anatafuta watenda kazi The work is so many Kazi ni kubwa sana But the laborers are few Lakini watenda kazi ni wachache As laborers Kama mtenda kazi we are supposed to go back to prayer Tuhitaji kurejelea maombi. Let us check our records very well. Wacha tutizame rekodi zetu vyema. And start afresh. Na tuanze upya. Start investing in prayer. Tuanze kuwekeza katika maombi. Let us start founding our ministries on prayer. Wacha tuanze kusimamisha huduma zetu katika maombi. If you are a technician, iwapo wewe ni fundi wa mitambo, you are a worshiper, wewe ni mwabuduo, you are a pastor in the house, wewe mchungaji ndani ya nyumba, wewe mwangalizi. If you are a sheep of Christ there, uwe ni kondoo wa Kristo pale, you have to make an effort. Lazima ufanye jitihada. Start praying. Uanze kuomba. The Holy Spirit is very very much faithful to help us. Roho Mtakatifu ni mwaminifu tena sana kusaidia. Let us begin to be serious on prayer. Wacha tuanze kumaanisha katika maombi. That is the only thing that will make us spiritually alert. Hilo ndo jambo la pekee litalosababisha sisi tumakinike kiroho. And we will never go wrong. Na sisi hatutakosa kokote. On the matters of the Lord. Katika maswala ya Mungu. The last point. Na hoja ya mwisho. Prayers renders one to become a lukewarm Christian. Kukosa kuomba inafanya mtu kukuwa mkristo vuguvugu. 
praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe you become a lukewarm christian unakuwa mkristo vugu vugu it is only because you removed you allowed the devil ni kwa sababu ulimruhusu shetani to affect your prayer life aadhiri maisha yako ya maombi remember we have been given the power kumbuka tumepewa nguvu and the lord tells us na bwana anatuambia rebuke the devil mkemee shetani and he will flee naye atatoroka So we have allowed the devil Hivyo tumemruhusu shetani to enter our prayer life. Aingie maisha yetu ya maombi. And slowly by slowly na pole pole kwa pole pole we have become sinners. Tumefanyika wenye dhambi. So we are Christians who are sinners. Hivyo sisi ni wakristo watenda dhambi. Every day repenting but there is no change. Kila siku tunatubu lakini hakuna utofauti. We cannot see the fruits of repentance. Hatuwezi kuona tunda la toba because we have neglected prayer. Kwa sababu tumepuuzilia mbali maombi. And finally na hatimaye we become lukewarm christians tunakuwa wa kristo vugu vugu haleluya haleluya and we understood that that type of living na tunaelewa aina hiyo ya maisha through the life of kahuria kupitia maisha ya kahuria haleluya haleluya that type of living aina hiyo ya maisha will make you enter hell itakusababisha wewe kuingia jahanamu It will make you be available for God's judgment. Itakuwa itakusababisha wewe upatikane kwa hukumu ya Bwana. Let us awake from our sleep blessed people. Wacha tuamuke kutoka usingizini mwetu. We have been sleeping. Tumekuwa tukilala. Jesus is telling you today. Yesu anakuambia leo hii. Wake up and pray. Amuka omba that you may not enter into temptation. Ili kwamba usiingie majaribuni. This is the midnight hour blessed people. Hindo saa ya usiku wa manane. The time when people are asleep. Wakati ambapo watu wamelala. But for us Christians. Lakini kwa sisi wa Kristo. We understand the midnight hour. Tunaelewa saa masaa ya saa 8 usiku. This is the day when the Messiah ndiyo siku ambayo masihi will return atarejea haleluya haleluya so let us prepare hivyo wacha tujiandae as we wind down tunapomalizia the book of ezekiel chapter 33 kitabu cha ezekieli 33 verse 11 mstari wa 11 the lord is very very much faithful to us bwana ni mwaminifu kwetu he so loving unto us anatupenda tena sana and his desire na tamanio lake is that we may be saved ni yakomba tupate okolewa say to them as surely as i live declares the sovereign lord i take no pleasure in the death of the wicked but rather that they may turn from their ways and live Turn from your evil ways. Why will you die people of Israel? Ecclesiastes chapter 33 verse 11. Ezekiel Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11. Ezekiel 33:31. Kuambie hakika kama mimi ni shivyo asema Bwana Mwenyezi sifurahii kifo cha watu wa ovo bali kwamba wageuke kutoka katika njia zao mbaya wapate kuishi geukeni geukeni kutoka katika njia zenu mbaya kwa nini mkafe e nyumba ya Israeli haleluya blessed people haleluya watu wabariki you have heard what the lord has spoken umesikia kile ambacho bwana amenena the lord has spoken to you bwana amenena pamoja na the lord has encouraged you bwana amekuhimiza maybe in your life huenda maisha ni mwako you have never taken prayer seriously haujawahi kuchukulia maombi kwa kumaanisha maybe you thought that huenda ulifikiria kwamba prayer is just something else maombi tu ni kitu kingine But today we have understood. Lakini leo hii tumeelewa that prayer is actually the serious commodity. Ya kwamba maombi ni chombo cha kumaanisha sana that helps us ambayo inatusaidia to be spiritually alert. Kukua makinifu kiroho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So hivyo we have a reason to go back to prayer. Tuna sababu ya kurejea maombi. If the Lord has spoken to your heart. Iwapo Bwana amenena pamoja na moyo wako. Then this is the moment. Basi huu ndio wakati. You can just go before the Lord. Unaweza kuenda mbele za Bwana. And say something before him. Useme neno mbele za Bwana. That he may remember mercy. 
ili kwamba akukumbuke kwa huruma zake may help you ili kwamba akusaidie to be a prayerful christian uwe mkristo wa maombi even as i now invite our blessed dear bishop hata napomkaribisha naibu wa askofu mkuu wetu just go before the lord enda tu mbele za bwana and pray na uombe speak to the lord today nena pamoja na bwana leo ask the lord to help you muulize bwana akusaidie haleluya haleluya Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word has come. Hivyo neno limetujia. That if we are not prayerful, ya kwamba iwapo wewe hauombi, the victim of the enemy. Unafanyika the victim of the enemy. Una unapigwa na adui. And we know the enemy is just hovering around us. Na unajua adui anatangatanga kizungira. He want to devour. Anamtafuta yule wa kuangamiza. But like the word has come. Lakini kama vile neno lilivyotujia. Why would you die o oh Israel? Je, ni kwa nini ufe e eh, Israeli? And the Lord is saying I do not uh, delight in the death of a sinner. Naye Bwana anasema sifurahii kifo cha mwovu. Prayerlessness leads to sinful life because Ku- it is through lack of prayer that you become apostate. Kukosa kuomba inakufanya ukue mwenye dhambi kwa sababu ni kukosa kupitia kukosa kuomba unaanguka kuto- kutoka kwa imani ya kweli. If you don't pray we have no communion with God. Iwapo hauombi hauna ushirika pamoja na Mungu. When we pray then the Holy Spirit highlights the areas in our lives that we need to repent about. Tunapoomba hapo ndipo Roho Mtakatifu anapokuangazia ile sehemu ya maisha yako ambayo unahitaji kutubu kuhusu. Meaning if we don't pray then we don't know the areas we need to be repenting about. We live a life that is we don't repent hivyo hivyo kumaanisha iwapo hatuombi hatutajua ni sehemu ipi ya maisha yetu ambayo tunahitaji kutubu hivyo hatutubu and we know the end result we've been told there is no way any christian who is not repenting will enter heaven nasi tunatambua matokeo yake tumaambia tumaambiwa ya kwamba hakuna mkristo ambaye hajatubu atakayeingia mbinguni that is why we must return to them na hiyo ndo sababu sharti tutubu leo and you know repentance is turning away from the way we have been living the na- word has come it has spoken to us So from today I expect to see more people coming for prayers in the altar of the Lord na unajua kutubu ni kugeuka na kuacha kile ambacho ulikuwa kitenda hapo awali hivyo iwapo unatubu na tarajia kuanzia sasa kutakuwa na watu wengi kanisani kwa ajili ya maombi more people coming very early on Sundays to pray watu wengi zaidi wakikuja Jumapili kanisani ili kuomba i mean prayer 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 it is prayer all the time na maanisha kuomba 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 ni kuomba kila wakati without prayer we become dead christians bila ya maombi tunafanyika wa kristo waliokufa And don't say you don't know how to pray because it is through surrendering to the Holy Spirit that he teaches you how to pray. Nawe usiseme haujui eti kuomba kwa sababu ni kupitia kujisalimisha kwa Roho Mtakatifu ndo anatusaidia kuomba. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Kwenye kitabu cha Warumi 8 mstari wa 26. The Bible says we do not know how to pray. Biblia inasema sisi hatujui jinsi ya kuomba. But the Holy Spirit prays through us with the groanings that cannot be understood. Lakini Roho Mtakatifu anaomba ndani yetu kupitia machungu yasiyoweza kutamkwa. Until we surrender to him, hadi tutakapojisalimisha kwake. That's the only time he will pray through us. Hiyo ndo wakati ataomba kupitia kwetu. That is the time we say that we are praying. Na hiyo ndo wakati tutasema tunaomba. The 
in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 kwenye kitabu cha Filipo 4:6 the bible says let us not be worried about anything but that for everything by prayer and supplication we bring all our requests known to him biblia inasema tusiwe na wasiwasi kuhusu swala lolote lakini kupitia maombi na dua tuwasilishe kila kitu kwake yeye so again prayer 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 hivyo basi tena maombi kuomba kuomba hallelujah church hallelujah kanisa So let us receive the Lord so that he can empower us with the Holy Spirit. Hivyo wacheni tumpokee Bwana ili kwamba atutie nguvu kupitia Roho Mtakatifu. Let us also hunger for the Holy Spirit. Pia wacha tuwe na njaa ya kupokea Roho Mtakatifu. Because the Bible says you have not received because you have not asked. Kwa sababu Biblia inasema hamjapokea kwa sababu hamjaitisha. So we must ask the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Hivyo lazima tumuulize Bwana atujaze kwa Roho Mtakatifu. The only way we can ask the Lord to fill us with his Holy Spirit is through prayer. Njia ya pekee ya kumuuliza Bwana atujaze kwa Roho Mtakatifu ni kupitia maombi.